right, glad you're with us again. I hope you've been enjoying the show and this isn't your first time. Every show's a little different because I am so blessed to meet fantastic people that are doing the Lord's work and letting the Holy Spirit shine through their lives through acts of giving of time and money to do the Lord's work and to let God's light shine into the world. I meet such great people at the Greater Dallas Coalition monthly meeting that every month I'm inspired and it really helps me with this show to have a new group of guests to bring on and share with you the good news of what is happening in the world quietly and kind of off the mainstream grid. These people are doing God's work, helping the homeless and the needy without any great fanfare, just giving their time and efforts to really doing God's work. So join me today with Rhonda Willingham and her sister-in-laws who are with us today talking about their organization. Now, what's the name of your organization again? Making It Count Incorporated. Right, and you're a charity that is helping the disadvantaged in the southern mm -hmm. sector? Oh, of course, yeah. we're a nonprofit organization. We've been standing now almost a year as a nonprofit, but we've been doing the work of Christ for the last 13 years. So yeah. you were doing this just on your own? Yes, correct. Yes. Just the Holy Spirit moving yes. you to get things rolling and do the Lord's work. Yes. And that's what happens if you let the Holy Spirit into your exactly. life. You just can't hold back. Yes. Exactly. So exactly. you've had a path of recovery and coming from pretty adverse circumstances, right? Correct. Uh, <clears throat> I was uh, homeless 18 and a half years. My husband and myself both, uh, we were homeless. And uh, I guess it's been about eight years ago. And God said, say goodbye. And when he did, he, uh, we le I left and went to Dallas International Street Ministry. I went through the discipleship program there. I was there a year and I left from there and I stepped out on faith. I uh, opened two boarding houses to help the homeless get off the streets. And then after that, I had to step out on faith again. He said, say goodbye to that. So. Uh, when my dad passed, it left us enough money where we were able to go purchase the land that I used to go out and get high on. Yeah, yeah. So we're now serving back in the community where I did a lot of mess up. Now we're in the process of doing a lot of cleanup. Amen. Clean it up. That's Clean a great it up. <laughs> Clean it up. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, and I think the powerful thing is so many times people don't realize that the solutions to problems in society oftentimes come from those people that are really on the ground floor or even in the mess and the Lord's pulled them out of it and they come back and mm -hmm. grab other people and help pull right. them out of it. Because <clears throat> you want to be in a situation that we're in right now is where we are hand up, not a hand out. Because there's a lot of communities and a lot of places that want to hand things out, but where do they go to get help to get on their feet again? So when you go through the fiery furnace like we all have, when you go through that fiery furnace, it, it makes it easier for you to want to go give what you didn't receive when you were out there, yeah. such as food, a guidance, love, support, a hug, prayer. prayer. Those mm -hmm. things were not available to us when we were out there because everybody wanted to only come out twice a year, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the other days that are in between there? So that's what we do. We go out and we make a way through the adversity of what people are going through in order to help them want to do something oh different, to bring balance to their life that even though you're out here, you can still, you are still somebody, you mm -hmm. are still loved because they feel that if they're out there that nobody cares. Well, it's not a point of not caring, it's that people don't understand because sometimes if you haven't been in that situation, if you haven't gone without, if you haven't been without anything, you don't know how to, to talk to people. You don't know how to treat people. But when you've been there, you know how you wanted to be treated, so you learn how to treat people that way. So it's not always a thing of what God wants you, what God does not want you to do. He'll put you in a situation to where you'll learn what not to do on how to treat his people. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're in the process of doing, treating people the way we want to be treated. Mm -hmm. So now you all have some land. Yes, sir. And what's on the land? Nothing. 
Nice. So We're people, the church without walls. The church without walls. So there you go. people come there. Yes. And you provide food and prayer and communion. Whatever else they need. Clothing. We provide clothing. Mm -hmm. Hygiene products for them as well. Whatever God love. sends that week. Mostly love. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of love. My mom just needs to be held. Yes. So I pray for a lot of them. And like you say, a lot of them just want to come for prayer. They don't want to eat. They've been up all night. They just need to know that somebody cares. Somebody is praying for them. Because a lot of times they don't think their prayers are reaching God. So I pray. I pray. Do a lot of prayer for them. Well, that's a powerful ministry. So making it count is making a difference mm -hmm. to a number of people. And yes, sir. And there's opportunities now if people are moved by the Holy Spirit to want Amen. to serve, they can come through you to help serve the needy in a, in a positive way. That's correct. Pulling up, hands right. up. That's correct. Every Saturday from 10 to 12, we are out there. During the week, we're there. But the big majority of things that are passed out or handed out are done on a Saturday where it's during a time where they're just getting up, they're in need, and they just want to be loved. So we go during those hours where it makes it available to reach a lot more people. Because if they get up, they'll get on the wrong track or they'll mm. go on another direction so they'll forget about getting fed. Or we catch them right when God wakes them up that morning and they have something to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before they slide into bad before habits. Before they slide right. into their into normal the, habits. Yes. That's correct. Yep. And where is your... Where is the land located? What's the address? The, the land that we have, the address is 3515 Metropolitan Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75210. It's right off of 2nd Avenue, right near the Fair Park area. Mm -hmm. Really a hotbed of homeless and needy yes, people. Yes. Correct. Correct. We call it the belly of the beast. Yes, it is mm -hmm. the belly of the beast. Well, that's where you got to go when that's people are on foot. Go. They can't travel can't. very far. That's right. They got to go they to can't them. Go far. But you'd be amazed at how many people are starting to come that way because they'll hear about it. And it's not only that, we don't serve sandwiches, we serve hot, hot meals. meals. <laughs> like they would want, like they would miss at home. You know, you can get some chopped beef and, and you can get hot barbecue. Soup. This last Saturday we had fresh fried fish. Right you know, the right land. there on the land, they fried, fried it. And, Gave it to the people, so they enjoyed it because it was like, wow, we might be in Granny's kitchen or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they enjoyed it immensely. Yeah. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. So you all work with various church groups and other social groups to help provide these services to people? Pretty much. I, I've, through the Dallas Coalition, I've met a lot of people. And they come down at different times. Different people do reach out and volunteer, and they come down. And they bring supplies such as coats and, you know, or, or whatever they, they have to bring, they bring it. So you can bring anything. If you want to come down there and you'd like to give to the organization, you're not giving to the organization, you're giving to the people. We just it, happen right? to be in a spot where they can bring it to because we don't have a building. So anything that comes in, it's always just enough that God brings in for us to make sure that everybody is being taken care of. Yes. Well, that sounds very efficient. And, you know, again, this is the one of the blessings of coming to a monthly coalition Amen. meeting. And you can meet Rhonda at one of the meetings when she can pull herself away from her ministry. <laughs> she loves to come to the coalition meeting. I love it. And get inspired. Isn't it inspirational it to is. be there? Oh, yes. It's I mean. filled with so many wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And you're able to network. Because without the networking, we, we couldn't do this on our own. Well, right. and like you're busy in the trenches doing the work and exactly. you don't have an opportunity to speak with other people who are doing the Lord's work oftentimes in a very similar way that you're doing right. in a different slot, in a different area. That's right. So you're busy in your location and don't get a chance to know that somebody else a couple of miles away right. is right. serving people as well. Doing the same thing. Yeah, that's why I love the coalition because it has been a blessing to the life of Make It Account. Mm -hmm. It really has the exposure and being able to, because when I first went to the coalition, we weren't a 501. We didn't have a web page. We didn't have this. We didn't have anything. It was just us. Well, now 
we've got our own website we have our own facebook page make an account has it's its own entity C3. We're a 501c3 mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Everything has happened. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's just an expansion of what God's getting ready to do. Amen. Well, Amen. you all really pulled it together, Amen. and that speaks for a lot. Yes. <laughs> As the treasurer of the Great Dallas Coalition, I can say that it's quite an effort to put together a nonprofit. It is. Oh, yes, it is. And carry it forward. Yes, it and, is. Uh, make things happen, and it's really wonderful to have a real positive example, you know. And we talk about it over and over again, but it is really a central message. Loving God and being a Christian really yes. comes down to two things loving God above all mm -hmm. others. And loving your neighbors and yourself. yourself. That's Amen. correct. And Amen. if you're not doing both those things, I'm sorry, but you haven't fully bought into the program. Amen. And if you do buy into the program, if you say, Lord, save me, I'm a wretch, and I'm so glad to have your saving mm. grace, you are going to be unable not to be like these ladies, giving <laughs> joyfully of time and money yes. to serve your neighbor and love people and let Christ's love shine through Amen. you. So that's what making it count is all about. That's what it's Correct. all about. Yes. It's getting it done. And you all come away with a great feeling every Saturday, yes. I bet. Oh, yes. You, 12 o'clock's come too soon. <laughs> you know, the peace that passes understanding yes. is, is a phrase that my church uses all the time, several times throughout the service. And it really is a powerful it few is. words. It is. Peace that passes understanding. Peace beyond peace. human measure. You just have that calm and joy in you that comes from letting the Holy Spirit Mark, shine through you. Yes. And you all so are doing true. that. Thank you. <laughs> you know, Thank it's you wonderful to see to a family coming together to serve the Lord. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but these <laughs> ladies are full of joy. <laughs> they are not stern old Houghton Church moms. <laughs> No, they no. are full of life and fire, yes. and yes. the Lord is shining through them with Amen. a joy and a peace that really yes. is That's refreshing. And You know, Amen. I enjoy every show having a guest on that really lets God's love shine through their deeds, their words, yes. their mannerisms, and it's just uplifted to me to be around <laughs> true followers of Christ that are really letting it shine through oh, and my God. do the Word. Thank so, you. Thank you. So Saturday mornings. From 10 to 12. From 10 to 12. Come by. If you want to help out, help out. Bring whatever you want, you want yes, to bring. Yes, whatever you feel like they need. Clothing, especially open arms to receive them. Because a lot of them, like you say, they just want to be held or prayed for. And that's it. You know, so if you have clothing, shoes, hygiene products, blankets, whatever, whatever you may think that you would need being out there without, it's really needed. Your time, your, your finances, you know, if you want to donate, we also take money as well, you know. And well, it she takes keeps money them. to do God's work. Yes, life. it does, it does. And for a long time, when her and my brother got started, they come from their pockets. They come out of their pockets. Right. God provided. I mean, and like he likes to cook, so he cooked all the meals. She brings it out and serves it, and then we all got together, and we just begin to help out financially. God has blessed us with other churches that want to come in and help out. They may take a Saturday to relieve some of the work off, her, off from us, so then that's how we just really make it. God will provide. God will send the help that is needed when it's needed. So right. come out and help us out any way you can. We'll be greatly appreciated. Fantastic. Well, and, you know, one of the purposes of my show is to share the good news of people really making a difference. And these ladies are really making a difference. <laughs> and there's a great opportunity for you to join with them on a Saturday morning and yes. see love in action, to see God's yes. love shining through them yes. and shining through you on to these people that have really fallen through the cracks yes. and are on the edge. And the great thing yes. about this ministry is you're really providing on the site help to people yes, yes, and encouragement for them yes. to break out of their cycle of homelessness yes. and move into more productive lives. Because when they see that someone has been where they, well, we've come yes. from where they are. So we, we can relate. We understand. We know. We know. We know. We've been there. I've been there. I, I used to live in a shelter and I had two children. 
at the time. Well, at the time I had three and my, uh, my uh, oldest son father took him away. And then I was just left with the two little ones. So we lived in the shelter, but God provided all that we needed at that time. And my sister was speaking about just how much joy I had, even in the place that I was, not wanting to go. I told the Lord, if I must go, let me be of help to someone that's there. And my little children, five and three, they were. We helped another lady carry her things and her two babies up three flights of stairs. All the others, they were there and wouldn't help. So God gave me something to do as I lived there peacefully. Though I was not on the streets, but still, I was homeless with two children. I had been on drugs. He had delivered me from that time before I went into the shelter. So being out there and just, 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 out there, just out there, nowhere to go, no way to turn, not want, knowing what you're going to do the next day, not knowing where you're going to see yourself. I can't even see myself five years from then, you know, until now. But hopefully one day they'll turn themselves around and say, if it had not been for God and me going through what I went through, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I don't regret going through that. I don't because I am who I am and where I am today because of that and God's deliverance, total deliverance. I never look back, never dip back. So God is so good. God is good. Yes. But you know it's God when there used to be a time we I'd have to pay people to clean up the land and make sure that it was in Anything shape for us to come on Saturdays. Yeah. and get all the dope bags up and get all the things up off the ground and all around Bottles, us to trash. Yeah. Well, oh God. when God came in, he told me to tell them, he said, it's going to be a shift in the atmosphere. They didn't mm -hmm. believe me. Mm -hmm. So when I spoke into existence what God had put on my heart, it's a shift in the atmosphere. The dope houses within six blocks burnt down to the ground. There's no more dope houses around there. They might be doing their selling, but it's not where he where he has taken over and then you've got the people that come every saturday to make sure that the ground is taken care of mm -hmm. cleaned up it's mm -hmm. reverence for christ because they don't smoke out there on the grounds if they're they don't curse out there they're they're mindful of where they are mm -hmm. so it's sanctified land and they know that god has put it there because of the what we went through as being homeless, if he did it for us, he's no respecter of persons, he'll do it for you. So therefore, they Amen. know this, they can Amen. see it. It's something they can mm. see, they can touch, it's tangible. So when that happens, there, it's, it's, it's a feeling that you can't forget that they love me, even though they're not here anymore, they love me. You know, they're gonna they give care. us hugs, they're, yeah, gonna, they they're gonna pray for you. They really they, care. Joy, joy and happiness is two different things. Mm. So when they feel joy and they respect where they are, they give it all they have, and then they want to become part of it. Most of my volunteers Amen. are homeless now. The people that are around there, they make sure they're on that land, on Deliverance Alley, hours before we even get there. Make sure that's cleaned up. Make sure this is done. And they, they it gives them, them a together. purpose. It gives right. them a reason and, and a purpose. Right. And a yes. purpose right. to live in, not just to go from high to drunk, exactly. to stupor, to right. the next high, right. the next drunk. But to have a purpose, and you know, Ooh, this is a Jesus. powerful testimony. Yes. I mean, these ladies came out of the furnace, have reborn, and this then they're Shad bringing Shad other Shad people up. Indigo. <laughs> Fiery yes. furnace, yes. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Coming out of it with Coming a positive out. attitude. Yeah. Yes. And one of the things is that before, sometimes before we get there, they're praying with each other. Yes. That that's that's, that's powerful. Talk about a shift in the atmosphere. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's awesome. They're coming out of themselves and allowing themselves to be used um, and to, to be heard and to be seen and to, to have worth, self worth. So, about so. how many people show up on an average Saturday? Between Ooh. 150 to 200, depending yeah. on what it is. Oh, my yeah. God. We're not talking about a couple of people. Yeah. We started out with 30, but oh. I cook it enough food now growing. that we're feeding between 150 to 200. Yeah. This is what I... So this yeah. is a real deal. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. I was and thinking all the all are The day before. Yes, uh, that's how many we have. Like on the land. Yeah. So sometimes it's, on the land. 
because God has provided, like he say, if he has a job for you to do, he's going to provide you with everything, everything that you need to do that job, to get that job done. So there's no reason for you not to step up. Well, you know, if you're sitting at home, if you're really comfortable <laughs> like me, I, I just ate a big meal. <laughs> and I'm going to eat another big meal this evening. I don't even remotely know what hunger is about. Uh -huh. yeah. But, you know, I can imagine it. And I'm so, it's so wonderful. This may be the only good meal these people right. get in a week. Exactly. Right. In a week. And that's what, that's what. And the spiritual nourishment exactly. of prayer yes. and comfort yes. and succor to really bring them forward. Mm -hmm. Because people will see my car and they'll flag me down. I'll say, what you, what you need today? They say, I just need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for me right now, right now. And they could be in oh. tears. They'll be crying. Mm -hmm. they, they mm -hmm. just, she say, wait a minute. She'll just pull right on her. Sometimes she stop in the middle of the street, mm -hmm. put it in park and get out. Right, right there, right yeah. there. If you ask for it, that means that's something that yes. you need. So if you're flagging me down, yes. That's something you need, so we're going to do it. And we're going to do it now. We're not going to postpone it. We're not yeah. going to wait till later. Wait if, till if you need it now, that's what we're going to do. Right and that's now. exactly what we do. We pray right then and there. And sometimes, you know, they, that, they just need to cry. Because I've Relief. had girls that have gone through some horrific things at night, and all they want to do is just get somebody to hold them, let them know that they have some worth. They just they're loved. Because I was out there, so I know. Lived in abandoned houses. You had to wash clothes out of a bucket. You know, you've had to make a toilet out of a closet with a bucket. You know, anything. My husband used to make sure, in which is now he's saved and he's out of the the miry clay. But we both came out of it together. Mm. So he has a a powerful thing to where he's my backbone. He's like, hey. You know, we got to do this Saturday. What don't you have? We need to get this because you know they're going to need this. And if yes. I forget it, he takes care of it. Oh, he's on it. And then stall us on me. And then <laughs> so I have plenty of backup, and I have it's yeah. it's amazing. And I thank God that He has allowed so many people to come forth and want to be part of yes. making it count yes. and make yes. it count. So the address of your lot. Again. Your land is on your website? Yes, everything is on there. And when you go to Facebook or the website, you're able to sign up to volunteer. And it'll message me to let me know that that's what you want to do. And then I'll get in touch with you. And we'll take it from there. Fantastic. Well, you know, this is a powerful ministry. And I don't know about you, but <laughs> every week I get inspired <laughs> by these Amen. great people that are doing the Lord's work. And the Holy Spirit is just pouring out of oh, them Lord, joyfully and happily. You, you know, you oh, may feel, God. if you haven't let the Holy Spirit in your life, you may feel put upon when people say, help us in this ministry, or a neighbor that needs you, or a homeless person that really needs your care. You may think, this is horrible. I don't want to do this. I already pay plenty of taxes, mm -hmm. but taxes are nothing mm -mm. compared to Ooh. joyful giving. Amen. No matter how much you're paying in taxes, you don't get any satisfaction out of paying taxes. Mm -mm. But I'll guarantee you, <laughs> these ladies get a ton of satisfaction out exactly. of what they're doing. And Amen. they're not taking anything Amen. out of this deal. This no. is not a paid gig. This is people serving and God. helping you serve the yes. needy and the disadvantaged. Unbelievable to be working with 150, 200 people on a Saturday morning, mm -hmm. getting them up, getting them going. They're there ahead of time, excited. Yep. Yes. Because they really need the ministry. They do. But us they affluent do. people need the ministry too. Because it's easy to get a hard heart. When oh, you're yes, it is. When you're not your having your hands oh, to the goodness, plow. Yes. When you don't have yes. your hands to the plow, you go through those, those miseries and pains. But like on Deliverance Alley now, we're in the process of trying to get a resource center built. Yes. Because, see, people need somewhere to take a bath. Yes. They need somewhere to do Gosh. all of these little things and maybe just take a nap. Some of them want to just get near my car so they can lay down and relax. Or they'll eat and they'll lay down in the field. Well, the one, they can do that and close their eyes and know that nothing's going to happen to them. Yeah. And that, that's the thing about it. So it's we're getting this building built. God's going to send everything that we need. I know it. I stand on it. That whatever we need, 
he's going to send our way because he knows what he wants for his children. Mm -hmm. So it, we have to be about our father's business. Amen. That's the motto with making Amen. it count. Yes. If Being I don't have any father. business, if it's not about my father's business, there is no business. So that's, that's where our motto is, being about our father's business. Now, can people give online, or do they just need to reach out to you? And no, I have a PayPal you? account. To, uh, all of that through there, yeah. they can do it through so making an account. You're automated. You're up to date. And oh yes. Oh yes. God has <laughs> sent it that way. You. <laughs> he has so sent that for us. They are ready. <laughs> online donations. They are ready to do the Lord's work, and they can do more yes. of it with your help. Yes. So, yes. You know, I'm always touting people to give to the Great Dallas Coalition and the fantastic Dallas Champions Academy. But these are coalition <laughs> partners, yes. and we need to support everybody we can. And all I can say is just let God's love shine yes. through you yes. by you. just Hallelujah. giving and giving. Online giving is so great because you can just let the Spirit move you, and the consequences exactly. come later. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll find a way to make yes. it pay, and it will work, <laughs> I'll assure you. If you just say, Lord, let me be your servant yes. and, do your, and will. do your will. Maybe you don't go out and eat as much. Maybe you don't buy a new car as often or do other things. But living frugally so that you can joyfully give 10% mm -hmm. of your income Amen. to helping other people at a minimum. You know, John Wesley came up with the 80-10-10 rule of live on 80%, save 10%, and give 10% as a base level of giving for those that are just getting by, not doing well. If you're doing well, you ought to step your giving percentage up. If the Spirit's really with you, you're not going to be able to resist stepping that giving percentage up to 20, 30, even 40 percent of your income because you really want to share the Lord's bounty with your fellow man because guess what? You're loving your neighbor as yourself, which means Correct. they're just as important as you. And these ladies are loving their neighbors, even though their neighbors are Four. making some pretty bad mistakes right. and like coming out of yeah. a bad yeah. place. Yeah. 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 Look at where we yeah. come from. Yeah. So I hope you'll go to their website, check them out, come out and volunteer. And it yeah. sounds like they've got some very yeah. ambitious <laughs> plans to put some tangible buildings on the site yeah. and really serve as a community center. And, you know, some people say, well, we need big centralized facilities to handle no, towns of people. The problem is that's too many. You need an organization that's nimble and small and filled with people that are spirit led who've come out of the trenches so they can nurture a small group where they know people, they recognize the people that are coming exactly. back week after exactly. week. Exactly. Yes. And that's great. I hope you all have a great day. Join their website. Come to a coalition meeting and may the Lord bless you and give you the peace of best understanding.